Hey everybody, this is Tanya Lux, Product Marketing Manager for Corel Painter. And recently I conducted a live webcast with Scott Kelby and he was kind enough to offer me some of his photographs. Um, they're not necessarily his favorite photographs. Um, some of them have challenges and he wanted to see what I could do in Corel Painter. So right here you see an image. It doesn't have a whole lot of detail in the image. So what I'm going to try in Corel Painter is using our brand new interactive gradient in the background. I created a layer mask on the layer here and we're going to drop down to the canvas and I'm going to grab my interactive gradient tool. And once you do that, the property bar highlights and gives you additional options for either selecting a preset gradient. Um, you can also choose, this might be a nice one for the sky here, you can choose different styles, linear, circular. So let's go ahead, we'll just start with linear and I'll drag and drop this out on the page. And the reason that it's called interactive is because it truly is interactive. I can grab this, I can reposition it on the page, um, I can even make adjustments to the nodes themselves or add more nodes if I want to. We can change the colors of these. So let's just see what a, uh, a radial looks like or sorry, a circular, then we've got our radial, and we've got our spiral. As you make adjustments, that's going to transform the gradient for you. So I think for our purposes here, I'm going to go back to the original linear gradient, and if I did want to add nodes to the path, all I have to do is click, and that allows me to add additional nodes to the path, and once we do that, if I come all the way to the top right here, our advanced property bar, I'm going to go ahead and open up this because it gives you more tools at your fingertips. In Painter 2017, when you select a tool from the toolbar or certain brushes, you'll have additional brush controls that show up over here on the right. So I've got my gradient, and maybe with this node right here, um, maybe I want to make that a little bit lighter yellow and with the blue down here um, we can maybe darken that up a little bit and you can also adjust opacity so if you actually wanted to see through the gradient you can do that also so now that I've done that I'm going to come up to the property bar again and select a painting style and let's see here um, I think that I might actually try this heavy dabs option here and in order to preview the gradient just click preview effect and you will see that gradient paint out right in front of your eyes. You can make adjustments to the size and the amount of paint that gets splashed out on the canvas there. And it's entirely up to you what you like to do. Um, it's fun to experiment with these and to try the different styles. So once I've got one that I'm satisfied with, I'm going to go ahead and say, let's commit the gradient. And the palette drawers, that's these what we see here where there's multiple brush controls nested inside of a drawer. I can actually double tap and or double click and that will close that up. Basically, you know, clearing up your interface if you wanted to be able to see your image a little bit better. So we've got that background, but what I think I'm going to do is turn the canvas off for a second. And when we're working with photos, Painter has a specific workflow that you can turn on. I'm going to go to my layout and I'm going to go to photo art. And here I can make some image editing adjustments to this photo. So let's come down here to underpainting and I'm going to say let's lighten this up a little bit. Okay, that's a little bit better. And I'm going to click to apply and then maybe I'll adjust the value just a little bit. And I know that that looks a little extreme right now, but we're, we are going to go and paint this in just a second. So I'm not going to worry too much about, um, you know, kind of the crazy colors that I'm adding here. So feel free to come in and make adjustments using the underpainting. When you're ready to paint, I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to go ahead and drop this down to the canvas. So I'm going to drop everything and combine it all together. And now I'm ready to clone. So in the bottom right hand corner of the underpainting palette, there's something called auto clone. And from here, um, what has just happened is I now have a new document. If we take a look up at the clone source, the source that I can paint from is the image that we just created. You've got tracing paper that you can turn on and off. So this canvas is essentially blank. There's nothing on it. 
So I can toggle this on and off. I can also adjust the opacity level of that tracing paper, and it really depends on your workflow, um, you know, whether you like to leave it off, on, or exactly how you're painting this image. I'm going to turn it entirely off, and I'm going to click the second tab down here called Auto Painting. This is wonderful for cheating, everybody. So if I want to turn on Smart Stroke and Smart Settings, by default, what Painter does, it drops me into a category of brushes called Smart Strokes. And these are intelligent. It's going to look at the image, and it's going to fine-tune the brush strokes based on the image that it sees. And it's going to bring in all the details for you. So there's all kinds of different brushes for you to work with, acrylics, chalks, pastels. Um, with this image, it might look nice as a watercolor. So I'm going to grab the watercolor spatter. And at this point in time, let's go ahead and move this over. And we are going to click the magical button, the play button. And this is what allows Painter to actually paint this image for us. So we see all those that beautiful gradient color coming through. We've got that nice spattery watercolor style. And just as I mentioned with the auto paint, it keeps shrinking down the sides of the brush to fine tune and fill in the gaps of the image. Now you can stop this auto painting at any time just by clicking on the canvas or clicking the stop button over in the palette. I'm going to let it kind of do its thing here. And eventually it'll stop when it feels that it's fine tuned all of the details. Now we're using a spattery kind of paint, so this is a little bit more abstract kind of paint to begin with. If I just click out here, and now you can see that I actually have the brush that Painter was auto painting with. So if I wanted to come in and you know fill in some of these areas, maybe I don't want some of that white canvas showing through. It's still using the watercolor spatter brush, and we'll come up here and maybe fill in a little of this. So this is, you know, a nice artistic version of that original image that, you know, no longer looks exactly like a photo, which is pretty cool. That's our goal. We want to have something that looks painted. If I want to come over here and grab, I happen to love the scratch board tool. It's really great for things like um, if I want to put a signature on this. So I'll just sample a little bit of color there and click the B key to get back to my brush and add a layer on the canvas here and I'm going to shrink my brush size down and we'll come down here and sign the painting and we're all done.